Our verse today is Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. The ingenious author or authors of Genesis in this chapter explains the reason for the diverse languages in the world. There are two points to note in this verse. First, what does it mean when the author says the whole earth? Second, what language was he talking about? On the whole earth, we must begin by looking at the context. The author had just told the story of a new creation. The flood had destroyed the old creation. Only Noah and his family were left in the world. Therefore, the whole world in the author's mind refers to Noah and his descendants, the peoples of the ancient Near East and the Mediterranean world. We see that in Genesis chapter 10. That was the known world in the mind of the author. The language of this known world was the same. The people lived together in harmony. There are speculations as to which language the author was referring to. Our verse in Hebrew says, there was only safa echat, literally one lip or one speech. That is a way of expressing one language. But in the previous verse, the author already refers to each of the different peoples having their own lashon, tongue. Some scholars see the Lashon in chapter 10 as regional languages and the Safa Echad as a common language used by the various peoples throughout the Mediterranean at the time. In other words, there was a lingua franca, although individual languages developed after the flood. No one knows what this language was. Even modern research cannot establish a single human language from which all others derive. One thing is sure. Suppose every human being derives its ancestry from a common stock. In that case, there must have been a time humanity had one single language. And that is what the author means by saying that they had the same words. It implies that they all understood one another. This common language united them in thoughts and a common purpose. However, the people wanted to explore their potential because they could speak one language. Hence, they contemplated building a tower. Their intention was not good. And God cast a division among them, not to achieve their selfish goal. This text explains why so many languages and divisions exist between peoples and nations. What do we learn from this verse? First, the unity of language reinforces that the whole human race has common ancestry. Second, in the beginning, only one language united everyone. But human beings wanted to use that language to advance their own ego going against the plan of God. Today we must be conscious of those who do not understand our language, especially strangers, not to alienate them from our conversation, deliberately excluding them or saying things against them. Third, the dispersion of the people became a blessing. It brought diversity of languages. Language unites the same people, but can also cause alienation for those who do not speak that language. So we must be careful and conscious that there are people who may be in our midst who do not understand our language. Finally, although we speak different languages today, God had intended for us to speak only one language, and that was why there was only one language. God restored that unity of languages on Pentecost Day. If you read Acts chapter 2, 1 to 11, when everyone could hear the apostles in their own languages. The language we all must speak is that of Jesus, love. The language which unites and does not discriminate. Living together in harmony and treating everyone with respect and dignity. Our languages should keep in mind that there are other languages and there are other people who do not understand us. We must respect our diversity as the spice of life. Lord, may we always speak the language that unites. Amen. 
God bless you, and I wish you a pleasant day.